This video is dedicated to the classical Farkas lemma, which predates the major developments in optimization in general and in linear programming in particular. The lemma was established by the Hungarian mathematician Julius Farkas back in 1902 and it had to do with the solvability of systems of linear inequalities. And uh, let's recall that uh, the simplex method, for example, was developed back in 1940s, long after Farkas lemma. The duality theory was developed around the same time. And uh, Farkas lemma played a very important role in the developments in linear programming and in optimization in general. The way we are going to establish the Farkas lemma is using the techniques that have been developed later, in particular the duality theory, because there is a very natural connection to the duality theory as we are about to see. So first let's state the Farkas lemma. So we have a matrix A of size m times n and we have a vector c which is a vector of length n. Then the Farkas lemma states that one and only one of the following two systems has a solution. So the first system is Ax is greater or equal to zero and C transposed X is less than zero. And the second system is A transposed Y is equal to C and Y is greater or equal to zero. So Farkas lemma is an example of uh, what we call the theorems of alternatives in optimization. In a theorem of alternatives, we usually have two statements, exactly one of which holds and the other one doesn't. All right. So in this case, here we have two systems and the statement is that exactly one of these two systems will have a solution, no matter which input matrix A and vector C we have. Okay, so let's see how we can establish this using the duality theory. So first, let's look at the first system. So it kind of looks like the objective and the constraints of a typical linear program. In particular, in the canonical form of the LP, we usually have a minimization problem with greater or equal to constraints. So let's write down such a linear program. So you have minimize C transposed X subject to AX is greater or equal to zero. And in the canonical form, we usually have non-negativity constraints as well, but we don't have any here. All right. So what can we say about this LP right here? So first of all, looking at the right hand side of this constraint here, it's zero, meaning that X equal to zero is going to be a feasible solution for us always, right? If I multiply any matrix A by zero vector, I'm going to get zero, which is clearly greater or equal to zero. All right, we identified at least one feasible solution, which is x equal to zero, which means that our LP can either be optimal or unbounded, right? So the first possibility is optimal. The second possibility is unbounded. Now, if we write down the dual of this LP, it will be First of all, we introduce the dual variables for our primal LP here. Let's denote them by Y. So Y is going to be a vector of length M. And because we have greater or equal to constraint here, Y is supposed to be non-negative. And the dual LP will be a maximization LP with the objective given by the right hand side multiplied by Y which is uh, zero transposed multiplied by y is going to give us zero. All right. We maximize zero. So you see our objective is constant. And if a dual LP is feasible, our objective is going to be equal to zero. If it isn't feasible, well, it's uh, infeasible. Now the constraints. First of all, because the primal variables were unrestricted in sign, our constraint will be the equality constraint and we'll have A transposed Y is equal to C. And as we said, Y was a non-negative uh, vector of variables. 
So this is our dual LP. And uh, whenever the primal LP is optimal, our dual LP is also supposed to be optimal, right? And whenever the primal LP is unbounded, the dual LP is supposed to be infeasible. So we have these two possibilities and note that the primal LP is optimal if and only if the dual LP is optimal. So we know this from the duality theorem. So this is if and only if relation. And also observe that the primal LP in our case is always feasible and the dual LP cannot be unbounded because the objective is the constant. So in this case, the primal LP will be unbounded if and only if the dual LP is infeasible. So this is also if and only if relation here. All right, so now let's look at when the primal LP is actually optimal. Given the form of this LP, again, the right-hand sides are all zeros. As soon as we identify a vector X with the objective which is negative, clearly the LP is going to be unbounded because if I multiply that vector X for which the objective is negative by any positive constant, the resulting vector will still be feasible. This system will still be satisfied, right? So what I'm saying is that if a x is greater or equal to zero, then if I multiply this vector x by some positive constant k, let's say, then k times a x is still going to be greater or equal to zero. And at the same time, c transposed times k times x is going to be less than zero and by increasing this coefficient k to plus infinity clearly i can make the objective as negative as i wish right meaning that the problem is going to be unbounded so essentially whenever the lp is optimal the optimal objective must be equal to zero here right so we see that zero is always feasible and the objective is equal to zero whenever x is equal to zero and as soon as we have a vector x such that the objective is negative we have the unboundedness so in a way we have uh, the effect of what we call phase transition here so the objective is the optimal objective is either zero or the LP is unbounded. There are no other possibilities here. All right. Now, the fact that this LP is optimal and the objective is equal to zero implies that this system will be actually infeasible, right? And this is again, if and only if statement. So this happens if and only if one is infeasible, has no solution. As soon as system one has a solution, it means that we have a feasible vector X with the negative objective for this LP, meaning that the LP becomes unbounded. So this would be equivalent to saying that one has a solution, right? On the other hand, if we look at the dual problem and um, the first statement meaning that LP is optimal is equivalent to saying that system two has a solution. So because this LP is optimal and has the optimal objective value of zero if and only if the LP is actually feasible, meaning that the system two has a solution, right? And uh, similarly, this LP is infeasible if and only if the system two has no solution. All right, by looking at the primal and dual problem here, we can see that system one has no solution if and only if system two has a solution. And then system one has a solution if and only if two has no solution. 
So this proves the Farkash lemma. Next, let's consider a geometrical illustration of the Farkash lemma. Let's look at the following system involving two variables x1 and x2. Assume that this is our ax is greater than or equal to zero and this is c transposed x is less than zero. Because we only have two variables, we can plot the region corresponding to ax greater than or equal to zero and it is given by this gray area here. So as you can see, it is a cone, polyhedral cone, right? And uh, then the set of points that satisfy C transposed X is less than zero is given by the half plane, open half plane below this red dashed line right here. So, and clearly the system has no solution because these two areas don't overlap, right? Now, this means that the second system given by A transposed Y equals C and Y greater than or equal to zero does have a solution and let's see how this can be interpreted geometrically. So in this case, this is our system A transposed Y is equal to C. All right, so and we have non-negativity of all Y I's and uh, because Y is a four dimensional vector, we cannot really plot it on the plane but observe that we can represent this system right here as follows. So you have 2, 3 multiplied by y1 plus 3, 2 multiplied by y2 plus 4, 1 multiplied by y3 and then plus negative 1 and 3 multiplied by y4 is given by 1, 4, which is our vector c, right? And in this case, what are these vectors 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 1, and negative 1, 3? These are the columns of A transposed or the rows of the original matrix A. These also happen to be the normal vectors of the lines corresponding to the constraints of the original system 1. And we can actually plot this on the plane. And um, this plot here where we show all the data provided in the problem is called the requirement space. These are all the requirements that we have that are summarized in this plot, right? So we essentially plot all the rows of our matrix A and then we, we plot also the vector C. And then what our second system says here essentially is that the vector C can be represented as a linear combination of the vectors AIs with the non-negative multipliers YIs. All right. Geometrically, this means that the vector C must be within the cone that is formed by these vectors AIs. So the second system has a solution if and only if the vector C is located within the cone formed by the vectors AIs here. And we can see that this is the case for our system here, meaning that the second system has a solution and uh, the first system doesn't have a solution according to the Farkash lemma. And here we have another example that uses the same set of AIs, but we have a different vector C given by five zero, so it's shown in the red on this plot. And in this case, we can see that this vector C is outside of the cone formed by AIs, which means that our system here, the second system doesn't have a solution, which implies that the first system does have a solution by the Farkash lemma. And essentially, if you want for the first system to have the solution for the system AX greater than or equal to zero, C transposed X is less than zero to have a solution, we need to ensure that this vector C stays outside of this cone formed by the vectors AIs 
And in fact, there is even a very lyrical song about this performed by a German band, which we have as a bonus to this lecture. Soul. 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 Soul.